Welcome back to Movie Rewind. Today, we will be looking back at the movie without remorse. It begins somewhere in Aleppo, with some insurgents being killed by a group of U.S. Navy SEALs. They are looking for someone as they scour the ruins of the building and move through the streets. Agent Ritter shows up and gives them a briefing. The Syrian government is apparently holding a CIA agent hostage. Hearing this, the team leader, John Kelly, moves his team to a different area of the city. To free the prisoners, they launched an attack on the supposed building. John Kelly examines the pockets of a dead Syrian soldier after they complete their mission. Through his phone data, they learn that he was a former Russian army soldier. When they were about to leave, a Russian unit opened fire with an RPG. In a counteroffensive, Kelly and his team attack. They realized right away that it was not a refuge for Syrian forces, but rather a Russian arsenal depot. They flee to the top of the building during the difficult battle along with the freed hostages. They climb into the chopper waiting for them when Kelly accuses Ritter of being responsible for his men's deaths at the hands of the Russians. They blasted the building just before leaving. It is now three years later. One of Kelly's team members was spending time with his family but gets hit by a van outside his home. Next, an unidentified assailant kills another retired team member. These were all survivors of the team that freed the CIA hostages in Aleppo. Next was Kelly. He and his pregnant wife are getting ready for Ben that night. He tucks her in and goes down to the basement so he can have some snacks and play music. Eventually, the power is cut and he knows that he is under attack. He takes his revolver out of his pocket, but it is too late. Some unidentified people have broken into his house. His wife has been shot dead, so he opens fire on all of them. He is about to murder the last person when shot and injured. The assailant escapes. Kelly crawls into his bedroom, but he finds his wife dead. Kelly is taken to a medical center, and he recovers in time. He receives a visit from Karen Greer, the captain of his Navy SEAL team, who informs him of the other murders. The security measures in place for the remaining members of the SEAL team are also disclosed to him. He explains that the attacks were not random and requests that she tells him who the assailants are. However, she asserts that she is not privy to that information. She tells him to rest because the case is being investigated. Kelly makes a full recovery and enlists in the U.S. Army Special Forces. The Secretary of Defense schedules a meeting with Agents Ritter and Karen. Agent Ritter reveals to them during the conversation that the attackers are Russian federal agents with the FSB who are retaliating for the attack when the CIA agents were freed. Because of this, the CIA had decided not to respond but will quietly keep an eye on the situation. Later. Karen gives Kelly the information he wants because the CIA is about to put an end to the investigation. From the files, he sees that the person who helped the assailants enter the United States was Andre. Kelly follows this lead. He is bent on exacting revenge for the deaths of his wife and former friends. First, he makes his way to Andre's office. He pretends to be drunk but gets stopped by security and dismissed. He goes back to his pickup and waits. He follows Andre's car on the highway and hits him at a turn. Andre cannot exit the car because of the way Kelly has blocked it. Kelly sets the car on fire, then goes in to find Andre. He forces him to reveal the identity of the fourth member of the Russian squad. Before he is killed, Andre reveals that it is Viktor Rykov. The police take Kelly in. Karen pays Kelly a visit while he's incarcerated. She warns him that he is facing serious consequences for the murder of Andre and that the office is not going to back him. He is unfazed and instead declares that he will execute everyone connected to the death of his wife. He then tells her that he has some leverage and that if the CIA wants it, they should secure his release from custody. Kelly returns to his cell but gets into a confrontation with some policemen. He challenges them, but then a U.S. Marshal enters the jail 
and tells Kelly to go with him. Kelly takes the phone from him. It is Karen, and she tells him to go with the marshal. They go to a secret meeting at an undisclosed military facility. When asked to share his information, he reveals the name Viktor Rykov. Agent Ritter disclosed that the man was a Russian spy who handled numerous things within the U.S. They are informed by the secretary that Victor is currently hiding in Russia. Kelly insists on being allowed to tag along with the secretary and the squad that will be catching him. Lieutenant Commander Karen, Kelly, and his staff then get ready to board a passenger plane that is headed for Russia. Agent Ritter leaves but tells them that he will meet them in Moscow. As a result, Kelly becomes suspicious of Ritter. Their aircraft is abruptly intercepted as it gets close to Russian territory. They are told to land at the airport in Murmansk, but the pilot refuses. The Russians then launch an attack on their plane. The aircraft crash lands in the sea within Russian soil. The group makes an effort to get out of the water, including Kelly, and they take refuge in a Russian safe house. They eventually move to another safe house in Murmansk. There, they find Ritter having some money on the table and scheming with two Russians. Ritter is forced to admit his true intentions after Kelly accuses him of betrayal. Ritter reveals to him that he arrived when the plane crashed and assumed they were all dead. He wanted to take Victor on his own, so he hired those two Russians to lead them to Victor. When Karen shows up and calms Kelly, Kelly spares Ritter's life, and in return, he takes them to Victor's apartment. Victor's bodyguards were already dead when Kelly arrived. Victor is inside and has strapped himself to an explosive suicide jacket. Victor greets Kelly and informs him that he did not plan to murder Kelly and his pregnant wife. Victor explains that someone has orchestrated the whole thing to pitch them against one another. Kelly tries to get more answers, but Victor presses the button and detonates himself. After the explosion, a member of Kelly's squad is shot by a sniper. They shoot at the sniper, but then another sniper starts to fire at them. In the end, Karen and Kelly find and execute all the attackers. However, the Russian security forces and law enforcement have surrounded the apartment building. Kelly orders his soldiers to flee through the building's back entrance while he keeps them occupied. Eventually, he poses as a Russian army soldier wearing a face mask designed for tear gas. With this disguise, he successfully gets out of there with a Russian van. He is greeted by Karen and boards a boat that takes them out of Russia. On the boat, Kelly grills Agent Ritter about Victor and his work for the CIA. Ritter opens up about his work for them. Ritter advises Kelly to conceal himself somewhere in the world and also gives him the money bag on the boat. He decides to cover up for Kelly by informing the CIA office that he was killed during the operation. Kelly thanks him and apologizes for accusing him of treachery. Some time passes and Kelly catches up to Secretary Clay in a restaurant's restroom. He has had time to put the pieces together and asks Clay why he was sent to Russia. He fails to respond, so Kelly abducts him in his car. When Kelly threatens to kill his family, Secretary Clay opens up. He continues by implying that restrictions on U.S.-Russian relations should be implemented to benefit the economy. As a result, he finds it necessary to threaten the populations of both countries. He adds that his plan helps to unite all Americans to oppose Russia, their common foe. Both parties were just being used as bait as he planned for them to gather in one location, turn on one another, and kill each other in the process. In this way, there would be no reason to suspect either nation's government. Hearing this, Kelly plunges the car into the river with the intention of drowning Clay and himself. But then, Kelly is pulled out from the river by Karen. Kelly gives the recording of Clay's confession to the CIA. A new passport is given to him as Karen drops him off at the airport. The movie ends with Karen convincing him to truly start a new life under a different name, but not to forget about her.